I strongly believe that Anki is the best flashcard app out there for GCSE students. And this video is going to show how I used Anki to create the ultimate grade 9 decks to achieve 12 grade 9s at GCSE. And upon the request of multiple students, show you how and where I got these flashcards from and give you a way of getting them for yourselves as well to aid your revision. Firstly, we must answer the question, why Anki? Now, Anki is a flashcard app that allows you to create flashcards and revise them, incorporating active recall in your revision, which as we know is one of the best ways of revising to retrieve information. Active Recall and Anki have been proven by many different scholars, professors and YouTubers as the very best way to memorise information in a short period of time so that you can perhaps retrieve it for a test. And in essence, GCSEs are just a whole memorisation game in which it's whoever can best memorise the information and regurgitate it onto a page. And this is why Anki is so effective for GCSEs However, it is also useful for further studies such as A-level and even some university courses such as medicine. This is why many med students swear by Anki for their revision. But put simply, the reason why Active Recall and Anki work so well at GCSE is the testing effect. A psychological phenomenon in which learning and memory is strengthened when information is actively retrieved from your brain rather than passively studied. And this is because testing effect in encourages the retrieval of information allowing it to be easier for you to recall this information in the future. And Anki definitely revolves around this phenomenon. Mm. By using this method, your neural connections are strengthened, allowing you to remember the information for a longer period of time. And this is the process by which information is eased into your long-term memory, which is essential for GCSEs as they can span over quite a long period of time. Now you may be wondering, but why Anki over all the other flashcard apps out there? For example, Quizlet or Cognito. These apps that look much better than Anki, their interface is much better, they're much more appealing. Well, here I'm going to compare these two apps and show why I chose Anki over the others. Now, when you load up to Quizlet, you see it is a good app. I'm not by any way slandering to Quizlet or other flashcard apps, but simply showing why Anki is better and more effective. Quizlet, you can use many features for in the free part of Quizlet. For example, testing yourself using flashcards, whether this is on your phone, or a computer or any device you have, as well as having all different types of modes where you can revise. However, a lot of key features that are required for revision for Quizlet are stuck behind a paywall. Now, this is not the case for Anki. Additionally, on a free version of Quizlet, space repetition is not incorporated. This is essential for GCSE revision and is one of the top two ways to revise, which is active recall and space repetition. And the lack of incorporation of this key part of revision is the main reason why they are not as effective as Anki. And this is this also doubles up as the reason why Anki is the best app. This is because Anki revolves around this incorporated space repetition function in which it can schedule cards for you to review when you're most likely to forget them. For example, have you ever been in that situation where you learn a new topic for your first time and you seem to understand it very well when you first do it and you seem to know everything, you do questions, you're able to retrieve all the information, all the definitions, Yet, a mere day or two later, you go back and you've simply forgotten everything. It's like something just magically removed all the information from your brain. Well, that magic is the forgetting curve. This is coined by the German psychologist Ebbinghaus, where in 1885, he conducted an experiment where he was asking test subjects to remember a series of words and nonsense syllables which spanned up to, I think, 2,300 different types of words and syllables. And from the results of this experiment, Ebbinghaus came up with the theory of the forgetting curve. And this was the theory that people tend to continually halve their knowledge of a certain topic over a matter of days and weeks after just learning this, that new information with if they do not actively retrieve this information after first being presented to it. There's also the process of rapid forgetting in which people tend to forget 50% of the information they learned one hour after learning it, 70% after 24 hours, and are only able to re retain 25% of a something they have learnt without any active retrieval of this information. Anki's in specific incorporation of space repetition where it schedules cards after you first review them to a specific point in time based on how well you answered these cards is so effective. This is because it brings these cards back when you're most likely to forget them, meaning you don't have to think you're for yourself when you're going to review a certain topic. But as long as you set yourself a schedule in which you cover your review cards for the day, you are set and you should rarely forget any new information. Only, but this is only based 
on whether you studied it properly in the first place and you're telling the truth to Anki given that when you answer cards at the bottom it'll give you a bar based on how well you answered it whether you thought it was easy good hard or you need to do it again if you find it really easy it'll, it'll bring this flashcard in larger periods of time so you'll be repeat so if you find a flashcard easy it'll take a longer period of time before Anki brings this back for you to review given that you remembered it so well face of time becomes smaller and smaller the, and the harder and harder you find a flashcard the smaller and smaller the period of time between Anki between, between you first reviewing it and Andy bringing it back to you now this part of Anki definitely follows the forgetting curve the steepest drop in memory of a sub newly learned piece of information is a mere few hours after you've learned it. Now Anki definitely follows the forgetting curve with this example because the steepest drop in scheduling cards with increasing space intervals, it, with small intervals when you just learn it and larger intervals as you go along, is very effective as it follows the exact theory lined out by Ebbinghorse and therefore proves to be the most effective way of retrieving information and hence passing the memory game which is GCSEs. I will be making the specific Anki Lex that I used available on Etsy to be purchased so stay tuned for that. Now this part of the video is what most people were asking for and this is how I created the ultimate Anki Lex to achieve 12 lines of GCSE. Now the secret is I didn't create most of these cards and I found them and this is definitely a very effective way of doing it given that Anki cards take a long time to create. However, if you go and download Anki the first time, or if you already have Anki, open it up, and at the bottom bar, there'll be a deck of three buttons, including one that says get shared. Here you can get shared decks that other people put on the internet. The most of, the best way to do this would be typing your exam board, then your subject, and then clicking enter, and a, an array of different decks will appear. Now, the most important part I'm about to tell you is that now once these different examples of decks come, you should individually take them into Anki and this is a very important tip if you're aiming for the top grades you must check alongside your specification if the flashcards include all the information this is because people create flashcards of different qualities and this is because people have different goals maybe they're doing combined or triple or maybe they do not want to remember every single bit of information however if you are aiming for those top grades and just in general, you should try to have all the information in the flashcards so you have the option of learning it all. And so, you should go through every point, for example, AQA Biology, go through every point on the specification, and then check if this is included in your Anki deck. And once you've done this, and, and if this piece of information isn't there, then you should add it in yourself, perhaps using a textbook or the internet. And by doing this and going through the whole specification, one, you become more knowledgeable about the topic and you have a better general understanding because you've seen everything that comes up. And two, this ensures that in the exam there won't be any surprise topics that you have never seen before because you would have covered the specification that has everything. This is how I created my Anki decks, particularly for GCSE sciences that got me nines in all of the sciences, but as well as other GCSEs that rely quite heavily on memorization, for example, history, DT, economics, uh, religious studies, and many others. Now this last tip, is what's going to enhance your, your Anki experience. And this is add-ons. Add-ons can be very effective if used properly in Anki. Now, what these are two that I would definitely recommend for GCSE students that helped me towards the latter stages of my GCSEs. First being image occlusion. Now, I'm sure you've seen people perhaps do diagrams where they've covered the names of the labels with boxes and then they press the space bar and it opens up the box and this is how they learn. This is especially uh, common in med, with med students who need to learn complex diagrams. Now, I found this useful at GCC as well, especially when you're short on time and you need to create flashcards quite quickly. This is when you could perhaps go to a Cognito Science video, screenshot the Cognito information after all the notes have been written, and draw image occlusion boxes over the information that you need to memorize and then put this into your Anki deck. Or take a picture of a diagram, for example, the formation of different planets and stars in physics. Taking a picture of this, then covering up certain keywords and putting this into Anki. Now there are benefits to this given that these flashcards can be answered extremely quickly given that you've only covered one slide box and they can be made extremely quickly. Although there is a downside given that you may not fully understand the information but only be memorising. So I'd say here that it's very important to understand the information then use image occlusion to memorise. My second key add-on would be the heat map. Now this didn't particularly make my revision any more effective. However, it was key in motivation. This is because the heat map 
for example, I'm sure you know how heat maps work, where the more flashcards you do on one day, the, your square will be a certain colour and the less you do will be a different colour. And this just helps you increase your productivity and motivation to revise. This tracks your streaks and consistency. For example, on Snapchat, where you don't want to break a streak with your friend, this will be like Anki, where Anki is your friend and you don't want to break a streak. This will then urge you to revise every day, get in on Anki to make sure your streak isn't broken. But it also tells you on average how long you spend on Anki cards and on average how many cards you do a day. Now altogether, this just serves as a motivational tool to increase your motivation to revise. All in all, this will then help you, one, start revising on Anki more. And I tend to find that when you do start revising on Anki, Now I think that is all. I think I've covered everything a GCSE student needs to know for Anki. If you have any more questions about Anki, drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to respond. Thank you for watching this video and good luck with your revision.